like a giant burrito bun. Mm. During my trip to Taiwan last year, I spent a little bit more than three weeks in the country with most of that time spent in the amazing city of Taipei. However, I did manage to spend some time exploring other parts of the country as well. One of these places was the neighboring industrialist city of Taichung, which is located in the west central part of the island and just over an hour away from Taipei using the high speed rail train. In Taichung, we sampled street food at two of its most popular night markets. We visited the ever so popular Mirahara ice cream shop and also managed to sit down and grab some food at a Michelin Guide recommended restaurant specializing in duck and goose meats. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you our experience at these places, including our hotel place of stay, so that you can decide if the city of Taichung should be on your list when visiting the country of Taiwan. Let's get started. Our journey to Taichung started from the city of Taipei using the high-speed railway system. The journey was fast and took us just over an hour to get to the main Taichung city station. From there, we took a 20-minute bus ride into the heart of the city that dropped us off literally in front of our hotel place of stay, which was the Le Meridian Marriott Chain Hotel. We arrived early into the city, so check-in was not available to us just yet, so we decided to roam around the city in search of some local cuisines. So uh, we actually are visiting this restaurant called Fu Gui Ting Restaurant. It's actually been uh, recommended in the Michelin Guide, and they serve a variety of duck-based dishes. So we ordered some duck liver, duck meat, duck meat in noodle soup broth, along with some vegetables. So this is going to hold us over until we actually head up to the night market later tonight, and uh, here's some of the good entrees that we've ordered. All right, so the first dish I'm going to try is this sliced duck meat. Mmm, very flavorful. Not as tender as I thought it would be, but a good mixture of uh, bouncy fat combination of uh, the duck meat with the fat itself. They leave the skin on with the sauces and the, the seasoning that they put on is really, really good. Mm. This is the liver right here, huh? Oh yeah, okay. All right, so check out this duck liver. Mm. Very tender. A little bit gritty. The flavor is pretty mild and subtle. I believe these here are actually gizzards, so make sure we uh, dip that with a lot of the good sauce. The texture is definitely different than the liver. It tastes like you're kind of chewing on styrofoam in a way. <laughs> mm. I like that duck fat that supplements the meat itself. I'm gonna actually try some of that chili sauce. I think it's gonna give it a bit of a kick. Some of this uh, duck into that sauce. Not very spicy at all, it's pretty mild. It tastes more like actually uh, a tomato ketchup based chili, but more like ketchup than it is chili. This Michelin Guide recommended establishment was definitely a treat for us as our very first meal here in Taichung. We found that a lot of the food items we ordered were very fresh and the taste had an overall mild flavor profile that was a combination of herbly, sweet and savory flavors. Although the first bite of gizzard I tried had a rubbery texture like styrofoam, it must have been an anomaly as the rest of the pieces I tried were very tender during the rest of our dining experience. Overall, if you enjoy eating poultry type meats besides chicken, this is definitely a place you should consider visiting here in Taichung. The total cost of our meal was just over 550 Taiwan dollars or equivalent of 20 US dollars. After finishing our meal at the 70 year old establishment, we decided to make our way through the city streets and head on over to the very popular spot known for its abundance of Taiwanese snacks for sale and its signature ice cream. Miyahara, a large red brick architecture built in 1927, originally operated as an eye care clinic and has a rich history dating back to the Japanese colonial period. In recent times, the building was purchased by a popular Taiwanese pastry company that preserved its architecture while redesigning the inside to resemble that of Hogwarts Castle from the Harry Potter novel series. All right, so we just made it to Miyahara ice cream. Inside, there's actually about 56 different flavors or 54 different flavors. Everybody typically orders the specialty, which is like a waffle cone, and you can add as many good uh, scoops of ice cream as you want inside and with the different toppings, but uh, we're just gonna order one and share it because we don't want to overdo it, so. Uh, but it actually looks really, really good. All right, everybody, so we just ordered a double scoop of chocolate and salted caramel toppings uh, in a waffle bowl. It's, it's pretty extravagant looking. <laughs> I don't even want to touch it, but apparently it's really, really good. Um. So because the weather here in Taichung is so hot, um, the ice cream, as you can see, is already melting, so you got to eat it fast. Mm. 
So we actually got the cheesecake topping and that's a uh, pineapple cake. Yes, hold on. Mm. Very refreshing. Mm. Mm. That's a pineapple cake, right? Mm -hmm. mm. So that's pineapple cake, which is originated here in Taiwan. So in Cantonese, because I speak Cantonese, I can't read it, right? Actually, we call that Feng Lei So. Mm. That's like one of the better uh, pineapple cakes I've had in a while. Mm. I'm gonna try that waffle. Let's see that this. Mm. The line for ordering ice cream at various times can be really long, but in my opinion, it's well worth the wait. The quality of the ice cream, all of the various toppings you can add, and the sheer size of the waffle bowl it comes in definitely makes it suitable for sharing. My favorite toppings were the pineapple cake and giant cheesecake bites. The total cost of what we ordered came in at just 9 US dollars. After finishing up this delightful treat on such a hot and humid day in Taichung, we made our way inside of the Miyahara building and admired the architecture. Inside of Miyahara, guests who are hungry have the option to dine in at the Moon Pavilion restaurant situated upstairs and is another Michelin Guide recommended establishment. Downstairs is mainly the snack shop where you can purchase pastries and some of the best pineapple cakes on the planet. As mentioned earlier, the hotel we stayed at, Le Meridian, was centrally located and offered us with convenient public transport access to multiple points of interest in Taichung. The hotel was clean, very spacious, and we booked our two-night stay there for under $200 per night which included an impressive breakfast buffet that made it super convenient for us during our stay. The staff provided top-notch customer service and even provided us with tips on which night markets to visit. I would highly recommend this place for anyone in search of a clean and exceptional hotel. Being self-proclaimed foodies, no visit to any city in Taiwan was complete until we got to visit at least one night market. Lucky for us, we were able to visit two and we ate our way through as much of the popular Taiwanese street foods as we could during our time in Taichung. The first night market we visited was located in Yijong and about 10 minutes away by bus from our hotel. The night market is much smaller in size and is situated a few blocks from the National University of Taichung. Upon arrival, the first thing we decided to try was a buffet-style stall where there was a long line of people queued up. The stall offered a popular type of street food called Lu Wei, which is an assortment of ingredients ranging from meats, innards, tofu, meatballs, and other vegetables you pick out yourself onto a basket. The food is then handed over to a chef who quickly stir fries the ingredients you select and marinates it with a variety of savory sauces and seasonings, and then loads it all up for you into a paper bag. First thing first is I'm gonna try, I believe this is, this is chicken. No, it's a, it's a mushroom, like a oyster mushroom. Mm. Okay. It's definitely garlicky. There's a little bit of a kick to it. Yeah, that's definitely a more of a meat piece. Don't know what it is. Okay, I think that's a, a sausage right here. Like a pork sausage. Mm. Okay. And I actually wanted to try this blood sausage that's like kind of mashed up with some glutinous rice. Definitely kind of a delicacy type thing, a little bit extreme. Not everybody's up for it, but I'll give it a shot. Just very sweet and savory, tasty. You don't taste any blood. <laughs> Just like glutinous rice if you never had it. Pretty good though. There were multiple vendors like this scattered throughout the night market at Yijong, and given that I personally enjoy savory foods, this was very fulfilling for us. And for the portion of foods that we selected, it cost just over 60 Taiwan dollars or about 2 US dollars. So whenever visiting Taiwan, one of the most popular street foods people have to try are the chicken cutlets, the fried chicken cutlets. This is my first time here, uh, but it seemed to be pretty busy. The customers were coming in left and right, so we're excited to try this piece. It's one of my favorite street foods to have. All right, there we go, the fried chicken cutlet. Whenever eating Taiwanese-style chicken cutlet, we found that it pairs perfectly with a refreshing cup of boba milk tea, so we decided to head over to the nearby Tiger Sugar and pick up a cup. So Taichung is actually the birthplace of boba and we're actually here right in front of the Tiger Sugar Boba Milk Shop. So the one we ordered it is the Black Sugar Boba with Cream Mousse, which is a top seller. Look at all that brown sugar goodness at the very bottom. <laughs> Just gotta puncture it with like no hesitation. Mm. We ordered this about like 10 minutes ago. That boba is still like tender, super tender. So I only got one in that sip, so I'm gonna get more. Mm. 
super tender too, huh? Not dry at all. I think that's probably one of the more popular ones here at the night market. We've been here at this night market for about two hours now. It wasn't quite as busy as it is now. Definitely as you come and uh, progress later into the night, the more the crowds come. I think there's a lot of college kids who come here for late night snacks. Definitely a lot more lively right now. So as we're strolling around, looking around for our next bite, we saw a long line in this shop here. And I asked one of the guys in line what it is and it's watermelon tea. So there's about 20 people ahead of us. We figure it's gonna be pretty good. So why not wait and try it out? Okay, so that's pure watermelon juice. They don't add any sugar or whatnot to it, so very refreshing, yeah. So as we were strolling along, we saw this sweet potato ball, a fried sweet potato ball shop. They also serve french fries, but I think the popular snack here is the sweet potato balls. Now you can get it plain, uh, like the way we did, or you can order it with uh, plum powder. Uh, we actually chose to go with the more healthier option without the plum powder, but it's, it's really, really good. So yeah, quite hot, so you gotta be careful when you eat it. Oh, mm. just like a fried donut. Fried donut with no powder, natural sweetener. These were one of my favorite street snacks in just about every night market I visited in my travels throughout Taiwan and cost just over $1.50. There was definitely a lot more to eat at Yichong, but given that we'd been out and about all day, we decided to call it a night and save our appetites for the next night market we would be visiting tomorrow. We picked up some fresh fruit for again another $1.50 US and decided to head back to our hotel to rest up for the night. Welcome to Fengsha, arguably the country's largest night market and is often compared to the famous Shilin night market in Taipei City. This market is gigantic and in coming here you can easily get lost amongst the crowds and various alleys that rope you in with vendors upon vendors all offering something to sell. In this part of our video, I'm going to take you on a stroll with us through the market as we sample many popular Taiwanese street snacks. So this night market I think we're only going to be able to scratch the surface today because it's a huge, huge night market. Tons of food. I heard there's about 15,000 food vendors and shops in the whole night market itself. All right, so as we were strolling through the market, we saw the stall where there was a lot of people lined up and it's a sweet potato based stall. Uh, they have the fried sweet potato balls, which we did have at the other night market yesterday, the Yijong night market, which is really, really good. So we're craving it again. And the option that the other option that they sell is uh, caramelized sweet potato. So uh, we're going to give it a shot and, you know, start that off as our first bite. So one of the things about these night markets and eating is you're not going to find a whole lot of options to sit and, you know, take your time. It's, I think the culture of night markets here in Taiwan or night markets in Asia in general. It's just to buy the food and eat it as you're walking. All right guys, so the next thing we're trying is the salted caramelized sweet potato. It looks like a deep fried yam. <laughs> Something you'd have over Thanksgiving dinner. Not overly sweet, but pretty good. Mm. That caramel sauce looks very overwhelming, but it's not. And so as you're walking, you just kind of Every now and then you have some open space, but for the most part, you're gonna enter a swarm of people. So you gotta make sure you stay close to your loved ones. Nobody gets lost here. Keep your belongings close to you as well. All right guys, so we're actually moving on to the next time we ordered. It's the uh, roast duck wrapped in a steamed bun. Now this is different than traditional Peking duck where they give you the smaller buns. The way they wrap it here is like a giant burrito bun. Actually, I think the ingredients they put in is about the same, right? It looks very similar to a Peking duck that I've had. I don't know if they put any sauce in here. Mm. Everything's the same as the Peking duck I'm used to, like the least Cantonese style with the white uh, bread. Mm. All right, you see all that sauce? It's like a hoisin sauce. A little bit spicy too, actually. I don't know, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if it's a sauce or they throw some chilies in there. Okay. So one of the things we've always wanted to try at the Taiwan night markets are the king oyster mushrooms that they grill and kind of torch with the flame blower. And so earlier here, there was a huge, huge line. So right now there's actually nobody. So we're actually going to take advantage of there being no line and add this to our list of items we're going to have tonight.
So we just got our order of the uh, king oyster mushrooms with uh, scallions and garlic flavoring and they added again some spice. So let's give it a shot. Mm. It's all about the sauce when it comes to oysters, oyster mushrooms mm. or mushrooms in general. Oh yeah. Mm. I'm gonna need to chew some gum after this. <laughs> so we're actually on the hunt for one of my wife's favorite uh, street foods here in Taiwan. It's the actual Taiwanese sausage. They call it uh, big sausage wraps in a small sausage. <laughs> That's the exact translation. It's in Cantonese, it's called Dai Cheng Bao Sai Cheng. And so again, that's a uh, translation, literal translation is big sausage wraps a small sausage. So <laughs> go figure. <laughs> We're trying to find a stall that actually has a, a, a big line. In all honesty, I don't think it really matters. I think um, if the stall is actually lined up on the main street here in Feng Sha Night Market, it's gotta be pretty good. So we might just go with, with the first one we see. Okay, so all jokes aside, what it is is actually just like an American hot dog, but instead of using a carb-based bun, they actually use glutinous rice as the big sausage. And in the middle, the small sausage is actually a Taiwanese sausage. They add a bunch of uh, pickled vegetables and floss that you can add. It's up to you, right? But it's actually pretty good. And so what they do is they actually wrap it in one of these paper wraps. And uh, the guy said that the way to get it out is to just kind of twist the paper and the rest will come out without losing all the items. So, <laughs> fail. Let's try that. Oh. Definitely more on the heart, pickly side in terms of taste. I don't know if I like this more than my uh, Costco hot dogs, man. I think I know here. Whoa. Oops. <laughs> You can also do a lot of shopping here. If you're traveling to Taiwan and you find yourself running low on clothes like myself, <laughs> you can buy uh, discounted t-shirts and, and whatever you need. I believe everything here is negotiable or willing to bargain. All right, so as we're making our way from one end of the night market to the other end, uh, my wife saw this takoyaki shop that seemed to be pretty good, so we actually picked some up. We're gonna give it a shot. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try this octopus filled takoyaki with the fried bonito flakes. Oh! <laughs> it's burning inside. Mmm, mm, that's good though, the sauce. Wow! That's better than some of the stuff we had in Japan. Yeah, in my opinion, yes. After spending two full days here in Taichung, a majority of the activities we did while visiting here were all centered around eating and searching out delicious Taiwanese food. After all, we are foodies and that's what foodies do. The city is a great change of pace compared to the super hustle and bustle you may be familiar with in the capital city of Taipei and often serves as a great base point for anyone looking to explore other destinations within Taiwan, such as Sun Moon Lake and Ali San. Personally, I feel that two days, possibly three, is plenty of time for the average traveler to explore and immerse themselves in the culture and popular spots of this city. The highlight for us on this trip here to Taichung was definitely the Feng Shan Night Market, given its size and the variety of different foods available when visiting and definitely tops Taipei's Shilin Night Market in my book. The ice cream and pineapple cake offered at Mia Har is something I haven't been able to take my mind off since leaving Taiwan. I hope you found the information shared with you to be useful and if you enjoyed this video, please like and consider subscribing to my channel to follow me on my food and travel adventures. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.